study, we're going to take a look at the 100% sweep. Now, in previous studies, we looked at the cow catcher and how that grip could be used to take down and turn, and also transition into the front crucifix, which could be used to sweep past guard and submit with a neck crank. We can see early attempts at the 100% sweep by Eddie Bravo and Hoyler Gracie back at their first meeting at ADCC, and he even goes for a similar setup at their rematch at Meta Morris 3, but both times Hoyler Gracie was able to slip out of the control. But it is a quality control that we can see demonstrated in some early judo practitioners. The grip is set up when an opponent's head is under your shoulder like off a failed guillotine and you switch the chin strap hand to an underhook with the other hand then making a gable grip over their back to put pressure on their neck. It's a similar pressure that you'd have with a power half Nelson and you can see a transition here from a power half Nelson into a position that looks like the end of the 100% sweep. So with the opponent's head underneath your armpit, the pressure is similar to a neck crank and that will help turn the opponent to get the sweep from close guard or butterfly guard that can land you in top position. You can transition there after a takedown or from a failed guillotine or a cow catcher by changing your chin strap grip to that short underhook and bringing the free hand over the top. You can see it being used here against the leg mount ride to create a scramble and get back to the feet. As without control of the bottom legs, the neck crank can still turn the opponent but you won't be able to stay on top. Although this can set up attacking opportunities for the triangle as they post out with the free or uncontrolled arm, or you can see here if they try and pummel the controlled arm back through the inside, it can also lead to a triangle choking opportunity. Now while that neck crank pressure can open up opportunities to attack the opponent as they react or brace out in defense, if they refuse to turn it can also open up a stable base to take their back. But if you refuse to let them turn and base, then it does open up the opportunity for the 100% to be a neck crank submission, as we see AJ McKee use it here to finish his opponent by holding on to close guard. Another place you'll commonly see this used in MMA is against the fence, where Eddie Bravo recommends hooking and leg so that you'll have a back taking opportunity available to you once it hits the mat. Without that leg trapped, you could still take the back standing if the opponent decided to let go with their free arm and spin through completely. But if they don't let go with the free arm, you might still be able to off balance them, but then they'll still be able to control that leg and try and attempt to wrestle up, although you should remain in dominant position. But if you don't have a leg hooked and the opponent decides to let go and spin all the way through, they can end up in top position or break free from the hold. And unfortunately, this is a position that we see happen all too often in MMA, as an opponent will go for the 100% but lack the necessary control and end up losing their position. But if the opponent doesn't know to spin all the way through, then the 100% sweep is a great way to get them to the mat. And if you did hook a leg, it's also a great way to transition into the truck or the back. And a good finishing option off the 100% sweep is to go straight into our crucifix neck crank, which we looked at in the previous study. And you can see here a 100% sweep into full mount and then transitioning into that crucifix neck crank with two underhooks to get the tap. I hope you enjoyed that look at the 100% sweep. If you want to check out more, look at the cow catcher and crucifix neck crank studies I've done previously. Leave a comment what you'd like to see next and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video. Thank you.